Hello everyone. So in this lab exercise, we are going to see Azure Monitor in action. So we're going to create a load balancer and we're going to create the health props and the health rules, things like that. And we're going to integrate that with the log analytics workspace. Then we are going to learn how you can use Azure Monitor and log analytics workspace to monitor the workloads you host within your Azure environment. So let's go and do that. In this exercise, we are going to create an internal load balancer. Then we are going to create a log analytics workspace and use Azure Monitor Insights to view information about your internal load balancer. So let's go and do that. So the first task we are going to perform is to create a virtual network and then we are going to create the load balancer. Let's go and click on create a resource to create a virtual network. So type in virtual network on the search box. Pick a resource group or create a new one. So we don't have any, so I'm going to create a new resource group. I'm going to call it internal load balancer resource group. Click OK and give a name for your virtual network. I'm going to call it internal load balancer VNet. So pick a region. So I'm going to pick West US and select the region. Click next for IP addresses. So let's give an address space. So I'm going to give an address space of 10.1.0.0 slash 16 and click on add a subnet to create a new subnet. So I'm going to call this subnet my backend subnet and give an address range. I'm going to give it 10.1.0.0 slash 24 and click on add. Then click on review. Oh, so before that, we have to enable Bastion as well. So click next to security. And here under Bastion host, instead of disable, click on enable. Give a name for your Bastion. So I'm going to call it my Bastion host and give an address space for your Bastion. So I'm going to give it 10.1.1.0 slash 24. And under public IP address, create a new public IP address name. I'm going to call it my bastion IP and hit OK. So we're not going to make any other changes. So click on review and create. Hit on create. Because we are enabling bastion, it is going to take a little more time than usually it would take to create a virtual network. And click on go to resource to verify everything what you have given is in the right order. So we have the address space listed here and we have the subnet we created one for the bastion and one for the backend subnet. Now the next task is to create the load balancer. Go back to the Azure homepage, click on create a resource, search for load balancer and hit enter. So let's click on the Microsoft load balancer and click on create. So under the resource group, select the internal load balancer resource group we created. Give a name for your load balancer. I'm going to call it my internal load balancer. Region is West US itself. Under SKU, we're going to select standard. Scroll down under the type, select internal and click on add frontend IP configuration. So here add frontend IP configuration. Give a name. I'm going to call it as load balancer frontend. Under virtual network, make sure you select the right network and select the subnet. So I'm going to select my backend subnet. IP address assignment is dynamic. Click on add and click on review and create. After validation, hit on create. So load balancer is created. So click on go to resource to go to the newly created load balancer. So the next task we are going to do is we are going to create a backend pool. So let's go and do that. So within the load balancer under settings, Click on backend pools, click on add, give a name for your backend pool. So I'm going to call it my backend pool. Virtual network is internal load balancer VNet and scroll down and we are going to add virtual machines later to this backend pools. So right now we are not making any more changes. So click on add. All right. So our backend pool is created. The next task is to create a health probe. So the load balancer monitors the status of your app with a health prop. The health prop adds or removes virtual machines from the load balancer based on the response to the health checks. So let's go and create a health prop to monitor the health of the virtual machines. So within your load balancer, under settings, click on health props. So we don't have one. So click on add. 
give a name for your health prop so i'm going to call it my health prop protocol as http and port 80 path we are going to read in slash interval we are going to give it 15 minutes unhealthy threshold it's two and click on add all right so our health probe is being created the next task is to create the load balancer rule so to create the load balancer rule click on load balancing rules and click on add give a name for your load balancer rule i'm going to call it my http rule retain ip version 4 select the front end ip so i'm going to select the load balancer front end select the back end pool i'm going to select my back end pool protocol as tcp port 80 back end port is also 80 under health prop select the newly created health prop scroll down under session persistence none idle timeout i'm going to give 15 and rest everything is default tcp reset is disabled and floating ip is disabled and click on add now let's go and create backend servers to create this virtual machine i'm going to run a script to quickly deploy three virtual machines for this lab exercise i just executed the command to deploy these three virtual machines this is going to take a while so i'm going to come back later so we're going to go to the virtual machines tab and keep an eye on if we are able to see these three virtual machines and we'll come back to this later let's do a quick refresh one more time to see if the virtual machines are created okay so our first virtual machine is created and the status is running so soon we will be able to see other two virtual machines as well let's see one more time if it is created all right so the second virtual machine is in the creating state all right so all of our backend vms are created and all of the vms are in the running state in the next task we're going to add all of the vms we created to the backend pool let's go and do that go to the home page and select the load balancer we created so that is my internal load balancer on the left hand side under settings select backend pools and within that select my backend pool so we haven't added any virtual machines when we created this backend pool so now we are going to come to this tab and click on add to add virtual machines so select all three virtual machines and click on add and save all right so all of our virtual machines are added to the backend pool now in the next task we are going to install ias on all of these virtual machines so to install ias we have to connect to all of these virtual machines so let's go to our virtual machine select all of these virtual machines one by one first i'm going to do on my virtual machine one go to click on connect and connect via bastion give the username and password and click on connect so if you have any pop-up blocker please make sure you allow pop-up blocker from from this website and click on connect one more time so while that is happening i'm going to click on connect to other virtual machines on the same time because we can execute the same process because that is going to enable us to install this ias servers quickly and now i'm connecting to server 2 now let's go and connect to server 3 as well so now all three virtual machines are at the connection state so let's go and accept all the default values so to install ias i'm going to go to the virtual machine we just put it up and i'm going to go to powershell and run install windows feature name web server include management tools and hit enter so i'm going to execute the same command on other two virtual machines as well and run the command on the third virtual machine you can skip these parts if you don't want to watch this if you want to watch um, the next step you can just click on the timestamp and you can go to the next task all right so all right so the ias has been installed so i'm going to run another command to remove the default web page and i'm going to add another command to create a new ias site which returns the value hello world cool execute the same command on the other two vms all right so now we have installed the ias on all three virtual machines and we deleted the default website and we added a hello world website all right so that task is done so the next task is to test the load balancer so to test the load balancer we are going to create a test virtual machine and test from there so i'm going to quickly create a test virtual machine go to virtual machine and click on create 
Azure Virtual Machine. Resource group, I'm going to keep it under internal load balancer resource group. Give a name for your virtual machine. I'm going to call it my test VM. Region, I'm going to retain in West US. No availability zone required because this is a test environment. Under image, I'm going to select Windows Server 2019 and give a username and password to sign into the virtual machine. Click next for the disk. We're not making any changes. We're going to retain the default. Click on networking and make sure you choose the internal load balancer network we created. In the subnet, I'm going to assign it to my backend subnet, not the bastion subnet. Public IP change to none. Under network security group, select advanced and make sure you select the network security group we created. So which is my NSG and scroll down and click on review and create. Looks like our validation is failed. Let me quickly check what's the reason. So let me go and change the virtual machine size. I didn't have enough quota to create that test virtual machine. So I just quickly changed the size of the virtual machine. So let's click on create. After the deployment, we are going to connect to this test virtual machine to test the load balancer. Looks like our deployment is completed. So click on go to resource. Yeah, our server is up. Let's click connect to the virtual machine and connect using Bastion. Give the username and password for the virtual machine and click on connect. Our test virtual machine is loaded for the first time. Accept the default settings and I'm going to launch the Internet Explorer browser and accept the default settings. And now to test the load balancer, we have to find the private IP address of our load balancer. Let's go back to our Azure portal, click on home page and go and find your load balancer. And within your load balancer page, make sure you hit on overview and click on see more. And then you will be able to see the private IP address. So I'm going to copy the private IP address, which is 10.1.0.4 and go back to your test virtual machine. And I'm going to paste the IP of the load balancer and hit enter. Let me increase the size. As you can see that this is the IIS server we installed. So if I refresh it, because we have three virtual machine, sometimes we get the connection from VM1 or VM2. So I'm going to quickly enter refresh um, multiple times so that I can see that the load balancer is, yep. Now the VM is changed from VM3 to VM2. So if you keep on refreshing, you will see sometimes result coming from VM1 as well. So our load balancer is working. So now we have our load balancer. Let's do the main exercise. The whole purpose of this exercise is to monitor the load balancer. So, so we're going to create a log analytics workspace now to enable the Azure monitor. To create the log analytics workspace, go to the Azure homepage and click on create a resource. This time search for log analytics workspace and select that and click on create. Make sure you select the subscription we created and give a name for your log analytics workspace. I'm going to call it my LA workspace region West US and click on review and create and click on create. All right, so the log analytics workspace is created. You can go and check the log analytics workspace. We'll come back to this later. So now let's go and do the next task. Next task we have to complete is to use the functional dependency view in the load balancer. Let's go back to the load balancer. Go back to your Azure homepage. Click on your load balancer. On the left hand side, scroll down until you find monitoring under monitoring click on insights. So by default, the metrics will be open. So click close to close the metrics. So this page view is known as the functional dependency view. And in this view, we are going to get a useful interactive diagram, which illustrates the topology of the selected network resource. In this case, we are going to select the load balancer. So this is the functional dependency role. So you can click on these interactive diagrams to get more details of the functionality dependency view on your load balancer. Additionally, you can download the topology. You can refresh to see any new changes, what it is made on this load balancer, etc. Additionally, you will get this zoom in, zoom out option as well. So if you want to zoom out, you can zoom out and see 
additional details. To download the SVG file, you can click on download the topology and that will download the SVG file. So this is the downloaded file. Now let's click on view metrics. This metrics pane provides a quick view of some key metrics for this load balancer resource in the form of bar and line charts. To view detailed metrics, you can click on view detailed metrics over here. This opens a large full metrics page in the Azure Network Insights platform. This is the first tab you will land on the overview tab and which shows the availability status of the load balancer and the overall data throughput and front-end and back-end availability for each of the front-end IPs attached to the load balancer. And these metrics indicate whether the front-end IP is responsive and the compute instance in your back-end pool are individually responsive to the inbound connections. So to check the availability, you can click on front-end and back-end availability and this is where you would be able to see the health prob status charts. And if you see any value that is lower than 100 for these items, it indicates an outage of some kind on those resources. On the top, next you can check is data throughput. This is where you can check the data throughput charts for the system. This is where you can gain the data throughput information. And you can hover over some of the data points in this chart and you will see the values change to show the exact value at the point in time. Another chart is flow distribution. So click on flow distribution. This is where you will be able to see charts for VM flow creation and network traffic section. All right, so now let's go and see the resource health. To view the resource health, go to all services and search for monitor and select the Azure monitor. On the left hand side, and on the left hand side, click on service health. Under service health, click on resource health and select the resource type. The resource type you are looking for is the load balancer. So search for load balancer and you can click on your load balancer. So the resource health page will identify any major availability issue with your load balancer resource. So if there are any events under the health history, you can expand the health event to see more detail about the event. All right, so now we have completed the functional dependency view, detailed metrics and the resource health. Now let's go and do the last task, which is to configure the diagnostic settings. So go back to the home page and select your load balancer. On the left hand side, under monitoring, click on diagnostic settings and add diagnostic setting. So give a name for your diagnostic settings. I'm gonna call it as my load balancer diagnostics. Click on all metrics and send to log analytics. So because we have a log analytics workspace created, make sure you select your log analytics workspace. And to save the changes, all you have to do is click on save. So this will send any sort of diagnostic reports to the log analytics workspace. I hope all the information provided in this lab was helpful. I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.